Good morning. Welcome to the flower communion service of the First Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Terre Haute, Indiana. Last week, the Reverend Dottie Stone, who is preaching today, put out a call to members and friends of the congregation to send pictures of flowers to use in the service. The response was remarkable. We have more than 50 pictures of flowers from well over a dozen members and friends of the congregation. And there are so many of them, in fact, that I have opted to make this week's service essentially a radio service with pictures of flowers. So except for Dottie's sermon, which is a video of her speaking, everything else will be voice over flowers. Welcome to the service. As Unitarian Universalists, we believe that our congregations should welcome all people, regardless of anything that has been used to divide people. In these weeks after the murder of George Floyd, in which long-standing uh, racial injustices in this country and other countries are being challenged by protesters in the streets around the world, in Pride Month, 2020. And just in time, uh, we want our congregation to feel welcoming, to be welcoming to all people. Our principles, our purposes, and our general inclinations are to try to be that community that celebrates diversity that evaluates and understands each person on their own terms. We do not always succeed in this congregation or in the Unitarian Universalist Association or in other congregations of the association. We know that. We don't think that we are some kind of inclusive utopia. But we believe that we should try to become one. And we hope that we move in the right direction in our own congregation and in our society at large. As it says in the principles and purposes of the Unitarian Universalist Association, we covenant to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. And every person will be welcome here when it is safe and easy for us to meet in person once again. I will now light our chalice. The flaring of the match can let you hear a sign of the light in the chalice that symbolizes the, the, our collective lights that we might say in a Quaker sense that bring ourselves, that bring us together in community. Our opening words are from the Reverend Dottie Stone. We meet to affirm once more and to celebrate once again our faith. Faith in ourselves, faith in each other, faith in the spiritual worth of our meeting together to share our sorrows and our joys, our fears and our hopes. In this faith we gather and know that it is good to be together. We will now sing affirmation number 380, followed by Hymn number 66, When the Summer Sun is Shining. Affirmation 380, hymn number 66. Rejoice in love we know and share In love and beauty everywhere Rejoice in truth that makes us free and in the good that yet shall be. Rejoice in love. 
this time, I'd like to remind you that pledges can still be paid, can be paid by mail. Pledges can still be made. They can be made by mail. And the, the Finance Committee has, in fact, received at least one new pledge made during this online period. Um, I'd like to remind you that there are committees that could use people. Over the summer, I imagine you'll be recruited. Uh, you will have perhaps read in your email this week that you're asked to participate in an email vote to affirm or deny or nominate uh, alternative candidates to the slate of candidates for the Board of Trustees presented by the nominating committee. Congregational polity is important to the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. That's its whole name. It's an association of congregations. The congregations collectively and the members of the congregations all together create the UUA. The UUA can give us advice. The UUA sets guidelines on who precisely may be said to be a Unitarian Universalist minister. But there is not a whole lot that the UUA can actually tell any individual congregation to do. We're independent. And uh, when we come to the principle that talks about the use of the democratic process, well, we use the democratic process in our congregation to choose the people who are going to do the congregation's business. These are the people who serve us for a year or two at a time, or sometimes for many years uh, at a time. We elect them. So please participate in this ongoing election. I had mentioned money. Please do keep contributing. Please volunteer for a committee if there's one that you're interested in. If you have an idea for a, a fun activity to bring different members of the congregation uh, together in some safe way in the summer when our kind of standard packed-in service followed by people huddling together over cups of coffee and tea and talking uh, can't be done in exactly that way. If you have an idea of something you'd like to do, you know, find a couple of people and organize it. Tell the board what you're doing. They kind of keep track of who uses the buildings. So you should kind of get their authorization to use the, the yard, say, for an outside event. Um, but don't feel that you have to wait for somebody else to come up with the idea. Um, if you have ideas, share them. When work days are announced, you're welcome to come. All of these are valuable contributions, although they do not erase the need for actual cash contributions as well. Uh, cash meaning money. Uh, very little cash being processed right now. This would be the time for the sharing of joys and concerns. I've already kind of shared my own at the beginning. Um, and I invite you to think about your own. And that if something really concerns you or is really joyful and you don't know who to tell it to, call someone in the congregation who you know. Uh, I'm sure that Dottie or I would be happy to listen to you. Send an email. Uh, to someone, be in touch. The congregation can listen. We'll now take a short silent pause and then follow that up with Spirit of Life.
to me, come to me. Meditation Before Viewing the Flowers from the Reverend Dottie Stone. Let us take time to pause and reflect upon the flowers which we share this day. These flowers have come from many places, just as we have come from many places to be where we are this day. These flowers bear common names, also family names, some of long genealogy and some newly created by the careful hands of skilled gardeners. We too come with our own names, some old, some newly created, yet all from one family, the human family. None of the flowers are exactly the same, no matter how similar they are, and neither are we. Buds are a symbol of the new babies that have come or are coming into our lives this year. Last year, these babies did not exist. This year, they are among us. What message do we receive from new life? What do we give to strengthen new lives and help them to grow? Are we honoring those who are new among us in our community as we would honor new babies and young budding life? Some flowers represent people in bloom of life all around the world. Some of these people we will never meet face to face or clasp their hands in ours, but as we focus on the fullness of life, we can remember that their hopes are our hopes, their pain is our pain, their war is our war, and their peace is our peace. And what of the broken, faded flower? It too is part of our treasure. It honors what has been and will not come again except in our memories. The broken flower reminds us of our own mortality and that time will fade for each of us. Some plants would not be considered as flowers because they bloom from common weeds. Yet, each blossom is a reminder to us of the worth of every living being who has the capability of beauty when we are willing to see beyond common assumptions. Each of us comes with our lives as gifts to offer to one another. Let us watch in silent reflection as we witness symbolic creation of beauty and strength as shared by members of our community. The Norbert Tropic Code. We Unitarian Universalists take great pride in being different. We like to explain how our congregations vary in their styles of worship, and we recognize that it's clearly different strokes for different folks when it comes to choosing that place we call our church home. Some of us like ritual as part of our Sunday time together, and some of us want nothing, no part of anything that feels like other religious communities we might choose to leave behind. Yet, even as we proclaim our uniqueness and our individuality, we also seem to want something familiar in our Sunday morning community. So we find ourselves creating new ways of expressing that familiarity. Today, we are celebrating midsummer, a special time, no matter how wet or dry the season. So you have been asked to share flowers as part of a UU tradition that has come to be known as the Flower Communion. Or for those of you who are still cringing every time I use that word communion, the Flower Festival or flower celebration. But let's just sidestep for a few minutes to look at communion UU style. In general, we do not have a set form of communion as practiced in the traditional Protestant and Catholic churches. Our Unitarian and Universalist ancestors did have communion services with the understanding that it was a symbolic relationship not a literal interpretation of the body and blood of Christ. And in the storeroom of our Terre Haute congregation, we even have a silver communion service that was used by the Hudsonville congregation 
and given to us when they discontinued meeting. UU Christians and some congregations in the eastern part of our country still participate in traditional communion services from time to time. In Transylvania, our present day Unitarian congregations also observe the bread and wine ritual four times a year, and they acknowledge most of the Christian church customs, including all, celebrating all the major holidays. But back to communion. Communion can be much more than tr traditional form. The word itself can be broken into a literal translation of common union or with union to mean relationship to one another. It's from the same base root as community, which many feel is the main reason for coming together on Sunday mornings. So let's put aside any emotional charge from vocabulary as we learn more about the origins of this particular service. We are following a tradition of our Unitarian ancestors today in participation of this service, a tradition that dates back to June 4th, 1923 in Prague. This service was probably not called a communion service when it was introduced to the newly formed Unitarian Church in Czechoslovakia. Norbert Chopik and his wife Maja were both ordained Unitarian ministers and the Prague Church met in a rented hall and the services were lectures. Neither minister wore a robe and there were no stained glass windows or other elements of religious space. There was no ritual or music. No offering was taken, but people put money in a box when they entered the room. And there definitely was no coffee hour. The members were mostly rebels from the Catholic Church who wanted nothing to remind them of mass, the form of worship from which they were fleeing. The Chopics, however, felt the lectures alone were too sterile and together they added the flower festival to add another dimension to their gatherings, one that was non-threatening. They decided the native beauty of their countryside could provide elements of meaning which would be genuine to everyone. Their simple service of bringing a flower to a common vase and taking a different flower from the common vase was such a success that they continued to repeat it yearly just before the summer recess of the church. And the flower communion came to be one of the most significant services for the Czech Unitarians and their congregation grew to have 3,000 parishioners. Many wives served in ministry then as now. Maja Kopchak was one such leader beside her husband. In 1939, she came to America to lecture and she, she remained here due to the Nazi occupation of her homeland that same year. She served as acting minister of the New Bedford, Massachusetts Church. And it was she who introduced the flower service to this country in the spring of 1940. She remained in the USA until 1944 when she was sent by the United, Re United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Association to Egypt. Norbert Topic remained in Europe as one of the leaders of the underground opposition to the Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia. And in 1942, the Gestapo broke into his apartment in Prague, confiscated his books and sermons, and arrested him and his youngest daughter. A charge of treason was leveled against him and he was taken from one concentration camp to another and he was executed in October 1942 at Dachau. Maja did not learn what had happened to him until 1945. The significance of their contributions 
to our Unitarian Universalist tradition continues in the tradition that they began along with 90 hymns written by Norbert. The core message in their ministry is one you've heard many times. It had no mysterious code to translate. Norbert and Maja believed that flowers could be a symbol to unite people because no wars had ever been waged in the name of flower or flowers. One could always see a flower and marvel at individuality and beauty, then carry this wonder over to the human experience. Their message seemed too simple to lose life for or be considered radical for practicing its teachings. Yet even today, our insistence of affirmation of each human being and the sacredness of human relationships beyond lines of gender, race, or economic status is radical and threatening to many people in our country. Just ask all those people who are afraid what it might mean when every person can move freely through the streets of their own community. We profess belief in the inherent worth and dignity of every person without regard to race, color, sex, disability, affectional or sexual orientation, age or national origin. We support the rights of everyone to be able to support their families with adequate housing and a level of income that's self-sustaining. We believe that we're each responsible for our own choices, that the events in our lives are not at the whim or will of some source higher than ourselves. We believe that we can create a better world than the one we have inherited. These are all the radical beliefs that cost Norbert Chopik his life. Are we willing to live as dangerously as he did to uphold our beliefs? Are we willing to speak out against injustice in any form? Norbert Chopik believed that the vessel that held the flowers was important as an expression of community. And when we place our flowers in a common vase, we're saying with, that we join with one another by our own free will. This service today is a statement of community, our community, our congregation are alike, just as no two flowers are alike. Yet together, we make a beautiful bouquet of life here at First Unitarian Universalist. And our community bouquet would not be the same without each and every one of us. Usually, we select a new flower to take home, a flower that was brought here by someone else. By exchanging flowers, we show our willingness to walk with one another in our search for truth, disregarding all that might divide us. We share in the celebration of community by giving and receiving, by partaking of communion, a communion that is essential to a free people of a free religion. Today, we take flowers with us in our memory from the many bouquets shared today by caring friends. And as we feast again visually on these flowers, I close my thoughts today with the words of an unknown poet. May the blessings of flowers be upon you. May their beauty beckon to you each morning and their loveliness lure you each day and their tenderness caress you each night. May their delicate petals make you gentle and their eyes make you aware. May their stems make you sturdy and their reaching make you care.
Our closing hymn is number 396 in the gray hymnal, I Know This Rose Will Open, number 396. Our closing words are Norbert Chapek's Flower Communion Prayer. In the name of Providence, which implants in the seed the future of the flower, and in our hearts the longing for people to live in harmony. In the name of the Highest, in whom we move, and who makes the mother and father, the brother and sister, lover and loner, what they are. In the name of sages and great religious leaders, who sacrifice their lives to hasten the coming of the age of mutual respect. Let us renew our resolution sincerely to be real brothers and sisters, regardless of any kind of bar which estranges us from each other. In this holy resolve, may we be strengthened knowing that we are God's family, that one spirit, the spirit of love, unites us and endeavor for a more perfect and more joyful life. Amen. Again, that was the Flower Communion Prayer by Norbert F. Chopik, as revised to be reading number 723 in the Gray Hymnal. May the blessings of love rest upon you. May peace abide with you. May God's presence illuminate your heart now and forevermore. Go in peace and know that you are loved, that your life is sacred, and that you are not alone.